thank you for thank you for the tip for me as well, Ian. Best wishes. That moves us on to item four, leaders' report. Can I ask the leaders of the council to present the report, please? Thank you. 
seen on their way in this morning, uh, schools, community and faith groups from across the county were also invited to take part in a commemorative Memorial Flame Art Project, which is part of a national uh, project this year. Schools and groups were tasked with creating a flame in this
provide a relation, uh, social isolation in older people. Having pulled the social cost scales previously, we all felt that there was a need to pull it again this year. Targets were exceeded on the last scale. And in relation to the number of other community groups supported, the target was 1.7 were actually supported. There was a target of 20 people to be engaged in voluntary work, but the actual was 24. There were 484 journeys, 22 clients. The majority would choose the service on a weekly basis, and that was to get activities at community centres such as lunch clubs, into visit families and care homes, etc. This project supports other projects such as the Health and project talked about in the next slide, by ensuring that people have the means of transport to get their activities, which is often a problem. This project doesn't just benefit those people needing transport, it also has a positive impact on volunteer drivers. There's a widower, widower who's been volunteering who has a Jaguar, he's very popular and he often gets requested.
video to the panel's deliberation to set out from paragraph 9, and the representations made to the panel by individual elected members to set out from paragraph 11. The panel considered a representation to pay a special responsibility allowances for cabinet support members, as set out in paragraph 14. And whilst the value of the role of members was recognised, the panel were in agreement not to make changes to the allowance scheme, noting that this had been considered previously by the remuneration panel. The panel also considered the current level of allowances and the difference between how employees appear compared to allowances of elected members that they are able to claim. This is set out in paragraph 14. After deliberation, taking into account the information provided, the panel unanimously agreed to recommend more changes to the allowance scheme for 2020-21. Council is asked to agree a scheme of allowances for 2021, taking into account the views of the panel that have been set out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The report requires a member to move a recommendation. Chair, as uh, Chair of the Constitutional Working Group, uh, in light of the report of the Independent Remuneration Panel before us this morning, I uh, formally move the recommendation that there be no change to the allowance scheme for 2021. Can I have a second to the recommendation? Yeah, Chair, formally second. Thank you. Are there any questions on the report? Can I ask the Council to agree the recommendations as moved and seconded? Agreed. Thank you. Move on to item 10, review of polling districts and polling places. Can I ask the Head of League and Democratic Services to present the report, please? Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Members. The Council is required to conduct a review of its polling districts and places every five years, and the latest review by the Council is due to be completed by the 31st of January 2020. The review of 423 polling places across 63 electoral divisions commenced in March 2019 and was paused to allow for the preparation of the European elections in June. There were two stages of consultation, the first inviting comments on existing arrangements in March and then a second throughout July um, inviting representations on the comments received during the first stage. The requirements to be considered when conducting a review of polling districts and places is set out at paragraph 15 of the report. The consultation responses received are set out at appendix 2, which starts at uh, page 86 in the, in the iPad uh, packs, and that's broken down by constituencies. And the proposed changes that are being made are set out at appendix 3, which is, is, um, uh, starts at page 118 in the packs. The changes can be summarised as follows, where we've had to identify alternative polling stations where existing ones are no longer available or more suitable ones have been proposed. And there are also a number of administrative changes which the office will see, but there'll be no change visible for electors. Constitution Working Group considered the proposals on the 11th of November and approved the proposed changes subject to a review of a proposal to change the polling station at Weirhead from the village hall to the primary school. CWG considered that proposal again just before Christmas, and the support of just after Christmas, and support, um, supported the proposed change based on the council's duty to ensure accessibility for electors, with the primary school being more accessible than the village hall. Members, I'd just like to point out one error as well um, in, in Appendix 2 under the Acliffe West Electoral Division. Um, at page 283 in the iPads. It's listed as the polling station for the SFA West Warn is listed as the Methodist Church. We just want to point out that hasn't been used as a polling station for some considerable time. Um, and it has been moved to the Tavinia Parsons Centre and it's that that's been used as a polling station in recent time and there's no proposed change to that. So just to correct um, that in the appendix. Chairman, the recommendations are set out at paragraph 4 to approve those changes as set out and to grant delegated authority to myself in consultation with the leader, deputy leader and relevant local <coughs> members to make any changes that may be required before the next review in five years' time. Thank you. Can I have a mover? Chair, uh, formally move the recommendations in paragraph 4. And seconder? Oh, 
ojos.
for that um, for the site pause. I was just clarifying whether we were able to use the voting buttons. So as the chairman explained, we'll take the nominations in the order in which um, they were they, they were moved and seconded. So Ivan Jewell's nomination was moved and seconded first, with Peter Brooks coming second. That will be treated as the amendment. So if we could vote first on the nomination of Peter Brooks, please. If you're voting in favour of Peter Brooks.
For the adjournment, 42. Those against, 61. Abstentions, 1. Therefore, the, the motion to adjourn falls. Therefore, we go back to the original of nomination of Ivan Jewell, and we'll vote on that now. So, again, if members are voting in favour of Councillor Jewell, it's 1. Against, 2. Abstaining, 3. And if you press the wrong button, the right one and it will correct it. Please wait until you hit the buzzer for voting open. Thank you.
was for, 63. Those against, 36. Abstentions, 5. Therefore, Ivan Jewell is appointed. Moving on. Motion, item 13, motions to note on notice. We have two motions for consideration at today's meeting. However, the first motion, submitted by Councillor Macdonald, has now been withdrawn following constructive conversations between the Cabinet Portfolio Holder and Councillor Macdonald. This leaves us with a second motion, which was submitted by Councillor Scott. Can I ask Councillor Scott to move her motion, please? Thank you, Chair. Is it going to come up on Thank you. At its meeting in April 2016, this Council supported a motion that recognised the great benefits brought to our county by membership of the European Union. For many of us, it will always be a matter of regret that at the end of this month, the UK will leave the EU without any real idea of the difficulties that lie ahead. We must act now to minimise the damage to our economy and our residents. Colleagues, we have been forgotten by Westminster. <coughs> And further to that, we have waited for others within the region to leave the North East into better times economically. Sadly, that is not going to happen. We must be strong and forthright on the matter of the Shared Prosperity Fund and the governance of that Shared Prosperity Fund. We must be a strong lobbying voice to central government and our MPs must share that same strong voice. We talked about this at Economy and Enterprise just last week and I know that colleagues around the Chamber are united in this view. I am blessed or maybe cursed with an optimistic outlook. I see opportunity and value everywhere I look. But even I find my optimism waning in light of this government's indecision on this particular matter. It is vital that we look forward and not back. We have significant opportunity in advanced manufacturing, tourism, creative industries, green technologies and other knowledge-based businesses. We have unprecedented opportunity on our strategic sites here in the county but we have to make gains in productivity, our skills base and value added. As a local authority, we can and must reach out to our MPs and ensure that we work together to realise the full economic potential of our wonderful county. Therefore, I move the motion as it appears. Thank you. Can I have a second to the motion? Yeah, Chair, I second it. We deserve the right to come back. Does anyone wish to speak? Councillor Bell? Um, thank you, Chairman. Doubtless, um, the Labour group will be inventing this into your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I can't be tested with the members myself, so I'll speak to this, and I deserve the right to come back on the Labour members. Um, in, in your course. Well, well, forgotten. I'm, sure, I'm supposed to be grateful that our Lib Dem colleagues have raised this issue in such a private and uh, temperate and constructive manner. Um, obviously, a bit of political theatre, perhaps. I can assure our colleagues that um, conversations have been held between the Conservative group and the three Conservative MPs on European funding, the Fair Funding Group Review, Business Rates Retention, uh, Public Health Funding, the Act Reform, etc. And I can assure her that uh, conversations have been held between uh, the leader councillor Henry and the MPs on this matter because I was present when those conversations were held. So thank you for the reminder, um, which it wasn't really needed. Um, our MPs, our three Conservative MPs, clearly get the issues, they understand the issues, um, and they understand that Ben, ben Hampshire said.
shield.
continues to make the case for our county and ensure that our communities benefit from it in the future. Thank you. I'm sorry, Chief Chair, a bit of a point of order. It does not seem right to me, whilst I don't necessarily disagree with what's up there, when I've had a chance to read it, it is not appropriate to submit an amendment so long and to not give people the opportunity and sufficient time to be able to read and think about it. Councillor Marshall? Chair, I just, think, I just think I should make it clear if I wasn't explicit with what I said. The amendment is based on the work of the County Council and the, and the Economic Partnership, the work we do with partnership. The things that are in there are things that we've been lobbying on and it's a position that's been agreed through that partnership approach that we've adopted as a council. So it shouldn't be alien to you if you've got interest in this area. You know, this work has been on for some time, Chair. I'm sorry, Chair, but I can't even say what the first amendment was because it's not come back on the screen. He's had all week to have sent this to everybody. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but it's unacceptable to amend a motion to that extent that it actually ceases to be the same motion. It was something completely new. Councillor, we're going to have a few minutes to just read through so we can read it through, okay? <laughs> Chairman, on a point of order, I haven't spoken on the, on the original proposal yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Councillor Shuttleworth, your um, request to speak came after Councillor Marshall's. He moved an amendment which was seconded. So, the, once colleagues have had an opportunity to read the amendment, the debate will proceed on the amendment, which you can speak on um, as well. Um, only one amendment can be moved and discussed at any one time. No further amendment may be moved on until the amendment under discussion has been disposed of. Each member can speak once on the motion, with the exception of Councillor Scott, who, the, as the mover of the substantive motion, has the right of reply before the amendment is put to the vote. She cannot otherwise speak on the amendment. If, following the vote, the amendment is carried, it becomes a substantive motion. If it's not carried, the debate returns to the substantive motion, and you then have an opportunity to speak at that point, Councillor Shuttleworth.
And I'm looking forward to seeing that change, but I'm not convinced that it will. And when you've got young people, jobs, who are potentially going to be lost, when you've got people in this authority working round the clock to try and improve our county, with no guarantee that in 18 months' time their jobs are still going to be there, with no guarantee that those schemes are still available, and with a government sat down in London spending its entire time arguing over what is going to come from Brexit and how we're going to move on from Brexit, where is the guarantee that that money is going to come to us to make sure this county keeps going? Because I've got no yeah, one minute remaining right now, at this moment in time, that all them lot down there who are sat in those rooms arguing over which trade deal this Trump are going to have or what we're going to do about the NHS, I don't believe we're going to see that money come back to this county because it's never come back to this county from a Conservative government. Again, your vengeance. Would you like to speak on the substantive portion of the amendment? Yeah, I was just simply going to reiterate what Councillor Bell said in that the new MP, and all the time I've been here, there's yeah. no MP that will be at the point to come and see me of any disgrace to bother in there. The new MP phoned Thursday, came and saw me on Thursday, and I said out loud and clear across County Durham, right across, we needed inward investment, money, and things to do with the jobs created. <coughs> Councillor Napier. Thank you, Chairman. Can I thank Councillor Woods? This may be your first where we're in really talk the green and chat. Yeah. As Councillor Marshall mentioned the Industrial Communities Alliance, I just want to embellish the work of the Alliance. The Alliance was formed following the merge of the Call for the Communities campaign with State Action. Most district councils and the county were former members of the Call for the Communities campaign. The Alliance Chairman is a, a cross-party <coughs> think tank sort lobbying organisation represented by over 60 authorities coming from Scotland, England and Wales. The National Guard Rep there is an individual called Steve Fotherfield, who is an academic from Sheffield Hallam University, who is an expert in area of structural funding, state aid, assisted area maps, etc. And he has worked very, very closely with the civil servants over the last couple of years on the shared prosperity fund. And following on from what Mark says, we have been lobbying and Simon has got the area on the shared prosperity for what we will be actually submitting very shortly. But the amount, there's three areas, and I'll take these individually. The amount, we currently receive £1.3 billion pounds per annum coming from, from Europe. So as a starting point, we have to have nothing less than £1.3 billion. On the EU definition of GDP, 75%, we are currently a transition area. Post-2020, we will get below the 75%, so if we were still in the EU, we would be classed as a less developed area, which means we would get more money. So the element around that, of the other areas of the country who would get more money, put on inflation, they increased leader programmes, we need at least 1.8 billion to stand still. The strongly rumoured chairman of the low growth fund will be rolled over into this, you know, that covers transport, housing, scale, that's where they're going to turn into billion. So to stand still, we need at least 4 billion. The distribution, what Mark was on about, is crucial. We are lobbying strongly for a robust needs formula basis because we don't get that. The centre may turn around and have some form of competition. <coughs> and the other area that was mentioned is governance arrangements. We actually need to make sure that they govern in the local area so it is localised. We believe once the withdrawal agreement is out of the way that the consultation on this will be moving very, very quickly because they've got to get the consultation ready for the comprehensive spending view. Everything that has gone on by the lines, by the other partners, Chairman, the work that's gone on, the work that will go on, I thought that we can get cross party support for the amendment, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Thanks, Chair. Um, I think we were able to support the amendment as written. The words that they particularly don't like, like the despair, it seems to be really the great of the world. And there's also a huge amount of detail in there that, quite frankly, I don't pretend to understand at the moment. I think we support the sentiment behind the amendment of fully briefing our MPs in detail on what's required for the county, and the letter's going to go um, anyway, I'm sure. Um, just to answer Councillor Lux's point, well, clearly there could be no guarantees about anything, can there, Councillor Lux? Um, all, all we can do, our MPs can't guarantee to deliver anything, the government can't guarantee to deliver anything. I don't think anybody has ever said we can guarantee to keep things exactly the same way as they were in the past. <coughs> um, things change. Surely one of the reasons for the delay in the detail of the UK shared prosperity program will be that the trade negotiations are starting now and ongoing in earnest for the rest of the year. And the government will have to decide yeah, is, which bits of the UK economy, therefore, are going to be compensated because some industries will do well out of that and some industries will do not so well out of that. Um, so I fully support the sentiment of us not losing out from where we are and I fully support briefing the MPs because we're able to support the actual 
and to override. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think it's a particularly necessary amendment, to be, to be honest. I think that the content of the amendment could have been left for the actual letter of the bill to the MPs. But um, having said that, I don't think there's anything to, uh, uh, to, to object to in the amendment, so I will, I will uh, support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. No one else to enter to speak. Can I invite Councillor Scott to reply to the amendment? Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm heartened to hear that uh, we are all broadly in support of um, the ideas behind this motion. Um, thank you, Councillor Bell, for perhaps inadvertently highlighting the point of uh, bringing this motion, which was that we are to unite as a council um, to work with our MPs. You mentioned that you've met with the Conservative MPs and Councillor MPs have met with Labour MPs. I'm talking about us as a, as a united force working with those MPs to make these things happen. Um, Councillor Marshall, thank you for expanding the wording of my motion, um, which I am very happy to accept. Um, that's all I'd like to say. I'll just ask the seconder if you feel the amendment will be accepted.
Just to reiterate the point that if we have time to issue a press release, then we have time to send a two line email to a local member to say that there's a visit happening in their area. Thank you. There being no other business, that concludes today's meeting. Thank you for your attendance. We're in the Durham Cyber Safety Team. We're here today at Council Hall um, to engage with staff and counsellors all about cybercrime and how to protect yourselves in relation to cybercrime. Um, we're here to offer advice, guidance, and also promote some of our services. So, a big part of our role is engaging with businesses, communities, organisations, small groups, you name it. If you know any of these that would value an input or advice from us, um, that is the service that we can provide. Um, you can find out more information about that by emailing us at fiber.protect at durham.pnn.police.uk. Thanks.